The second generation version of Audi's RS7 Sportback model delivers a massive 630 PS of power in this improved performance form and puts all that through all four wheels to scuttle from standstill to 62 miles an hour in just 3.4 seconds. You'll pay over £115,000 for the privilege, but the accompanying soundtrack might well be the clincher. Pure V8 muscle car. You never quite know what you're going to get with an RS badged Audi. Some are excellent, others merely make great autobahn expresses, while a few are just head scratchingly patchy in their array of talents. Just lately, however, Audi has been on a decent run. The current RS4 is one of the better examples of its vintage, and the current fourth generation RS6 is the best example of a big, fast Audi estate to date. Now, minded of this slightly hit and miss record, we were really curious to see quite how this second generation RS7 would turn out. It was first launched in its current form in 2019 when it arrived with a 600 PS 32 valve petrol V8. Three years later, to keep sales ticking over, Audi upgraded that model to performance status, and that meant power was uprated to 630 PS. And that's the version that we're going to be trying here. Even up against the likes of the Porsche Panamera, the Mercedes-Benz CLS 63 AMG and the BMW M8 Grand Coupe, this Audi appears to hold its own. The price stands up well and there's lots of new tech, including 48 volt mild hybrid electrical engineering for extra efficiency. And there's a clever launch control system plus wheel selective torque control and the Quattro Sports differential, which shifts drive torque between the rear wheels when you're cornering at speed. There's also a new five link rear suspension design. Best of all though, it's very fast. It's always reassuring to know that when you're spending this kind of money, you're buying something that's genuinely and demonstrably rapid. To find out more, you're gonna need the usual thorough car and driving road test. Like its predecessor, this second generation RS7 uses a 4 litre TFSI V8, but in this uprated performance form, it's provided with 630 PS and it gains 48 volt mild hybrid tech. Best of all though, it remains a thoroughbred power plant in terms of character and sound. A 62 miles an hour flashes by in just 3.4 seconds on the way to a 174 miles an hour maximum. Uh, the driver can influence those RL fireworks by adjusting settings for the sports exhaust. That's one of the configurable elements that you can influence and then program into the car's customizable RS1 and RS2 drive modes. All of this power is controlled via an eight speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with optimized shift times and a launch control function too. Uh, through the turns of the Quattro four wheel drive system's Torsen differential pushes 60% of drive to the rear axle in normal conditions, although at the slightest sign of slip, up to 70% of torque can go frontwards or up to 80% to the rear, depending on what's needed. Um, as with the uh, previous generation, pre-2019 era model, there's also a sport differential to vary torque across the rear axle uh, and there's wheel selective torque control to maximize traction too through the turns which should be all you really need to ruin the day of that supercar driver just behind. To this recipe uh, for this Mark II model, Audi Sport has further added a dynamic all-wheel steering system uh, via which the rear wheels are steered in the same direction as the fronts at high speeds for greater stability. And there's air suspension on an RS7 for the first time, although curiously, Audi reverts to more conventional steel springs with adaptive dampers for the alternative RS Sport Suspension Plus system, which is fitted to the top Vorsprung version and which has been optioned in as an extra on this test car. The other key change over that previous generation model lies with the adoption of a variable ratio progressive steering rack, and that gives uh, more direct responses to larger steering angles. But they're still not uh, the kind of feel that you'd ideally really want when you're pressing on a speed through tight turns.
So what exactly is this RS7? As a second recipient of the 48 volt version of the brand's twin turbocharged 4 litre V8 after the current RS6, is this merely a version of that estate in a posh frock? Like its showroom counterpart, the RS7 Sportback certainly looks perpetually ready to wield its sledgehammer performance. The sinewy body virtually hugs the road surface and these sizeable wheels are shrouded by boldly flared arches that leave no margin for doubt about the metal of this Audi Sport offering. The side view with its sharply defined lines and curved surfaces calls to mind skin drawn tautly over highly developed muscle. A low shoulder line shift see visual emphasis downwards uh, while the window line rises towards the rear and that gives a sense of dynamism even when the vehicle is stationary. Uh, the RS specific door sills with black inlays accentuate the high performance Sportback's distinct impression of forward movement. To accentuate the 1951mm width even further, uh, the front of this RS7 Sportback features a broad, flat, single-frame grille with no contrasting border. Uh, the radiator protective grille with its gloss black RS-specific three-dimensional honeycomb structure and the large front air inlets and vertical fins also contribute to the dramatic stance, as do the horizontal blades marking a distinctive downward edge to the front end and the RS Matrix LED laser headlights too with their dark bezels and their dynamic indicators. Along with the rear LED lights these ultra sophisticated units also run through RS specific animation sequences when the vehicle's locked or unlocked. The rear end's curved trailing edge and strip of LED lights linking the main rear lights make it one of the characteristic defining features of this car. The RS exhaust uh, broadcasts a suitably rich and full-bodied V8 soundtrack from two characteristically large oval tailpipes finished in black which sit beneath an RS-specific bumper with a rear diffuser and gloss black detailing. At speeds of 62 miles an hour and over, a spoiler extends from the tailgate. So what's it like inside? Well, there are grippy RS Sport seats upholstered with perforated Valcona leather and you're positioned comfortably in front of a RS Sports leather steering wheel with aluminium shift paddles and multifunction buttons, including the RS Mode button, which the driver can use to enable the Drive Select RS1 and RS2 modes. And this automatically opens the RS specific displays on the Audi Virtual Cockpit uh, in the instrument binnacle screen here. These provide details of tyre pressure, torque, performance, oil temperature, boost pressure, uh, lap times, acceleration and g-forces. More screens sit on the centre stack, an upper 10.1 inch display for infotainment and a lower 8.6 inch monitor for comfort features. Uh, the driver can use this upper screen to call up the RS monitor that gives an overview of drive system component temperatures, uh, maximum g-forces and information regarding tyre pressures and temperatures. Let's move to the rear where there's the usual A7 Sportback wide opening frameless door. Once inside, unlike the previous generation RS7, this one's provided with a three-seater rear bench in the interests of maximum versatility. But you're not going to want to use the central berth unless you absolutely have to because it's so heavily impeded by this over-prominent central transmission tunnel. Still, uh, provided you focus on the two main sculpted seats, you'll find that the 12 mm increase in wheelbase length this time around is enough to make things feel quite a bit more spacious back here. Let's finish with a look at the boot. Uh, the powered tailgate rises to reveal 535 litres of space. It's a rather shallow space, but it's obviously much more versatile than the saloon boot of the competing four-door Mercedes-AMG CLS. Space beneath the floor is taken up by either a subwoofer or a spare wheel, but you do get a 12-volt socket and this floor area net. Uh, when the seat uh, backs are folded down, up to 1,390 litres of luggage space can be made available.
By the time of this film in winter 2023, Audi wanted a minimum £115,000 asking price for this RS7 Sportback performance model. Probably more like £125,000 once you've allowed for a few well-chosen extras. So you're looking at a minimum premium of around £38,000 over the already decidedly brisk S7 TDI model. Uh, the closest rival is probably BMW's M850i Grand Coupe. Now there are three RS7 Sportback performance trim options. There's a standard version, then this carbon black model, which at the time of this test uh, cost around £124,000, and then top carbon Vorsprung, which as we filmed cost from just under £133,000. As you'd hope, all versions get lots of kit. Let's start with the outside. You get HD matrix LED headlamps with the Audi laser light system and dynamic RS specific turn signals. Those dynamic turn signals also feature with the rear LED combination lamps. There are big 21 inch 10 spoke star design alloy wheels with RS steel brakes and black brake calipers. Uh, we have the blue ones optioned in here. Plus key engineering features include quattro four wheel drive, with a sports differential to vary torque across the rear axle, dynamic all-wheel steering and the Audi Drive Select driving mode system complete with two customizable RS modes. The RS7 interior does a decent job of justifying the car's pricing. The standard A7 feels genuinely special inside with some beautiful design touches and real quality throughout. And that gives the RS7 a solid platform which it builds on with Valcona leather heated and ventilated RS Sport seats and expensive looking aluminium detailing with a flat bottomed Audi Sport steering wheel too. And that features powered adjustment and aluminium gear shift paddles. Now there's also uh, stainless steel pedals, RS illuminated door sill trims and Audi Sport logo projection onto the ground when you open the doors at night. Uh, finishing touches here include a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack, a black cloth headliner and leatherette. This mid-range carbon black model adds a matte carbon black styling package, an RS interior design package, a Dynamica headliner and performance tyres. Now here we have a few uh, key options fitted, RS ceramic brakes with blue calipers and the RS Dynamic Pack Plus. Top Vorsprung trim adds a panoramic roof, night vision, heated rear seats and the RS Sport Suspension Plus package which replaces the standard air suspension with conventional steel springs and adaptive dampers. Uh, we've got that added on as an option here. Uh, Vorsprung trim also gets a wide range of extra drive assist features because at uh, this level uh, Audi includes as standard uh, the Tour Pack and also the City Assist Pack. Those are options that cost extra extra further down the range. There aren't too many options that you'd feel overly compelled to plump for, so you really won't need to worry too much about inflating the list price. Uh, still, this does remain an expensive car with a big petrol engine, and that's usually a guarantee of rather scary residuals. Uh, the fact that it's going to be likely to shed 40% of its value over three years is just something that owners are going to have to accept with their eyes open at the time of purchase. Uh, it's certainly no worse than any of its key rivals. On other measures, the RS7 is actually remarkably good for a car with this power output and which weighs in at nearly two tonnes. 23.3 uh, mpg combined fuel economy figure is far from catastrophic, although it will be tough to resist putting those turbos to work in earnest. In day-to-day -day motoring, uh, you'd be pleased to break 20 mpg. The carbon dioxide emissions best of 275 grams per kilometre might also be something that you could live with. It's certainly no worse than you get from say a Porsche Panamera Turbo E Hybrid or a Mercedes AMG CLS 63 4Matic Plus.
The Audi RS7 offers all the grip, composure and sheer brawn most will ever need. If you were looking for the last word in driver involvement, you may find it a little aloof, but then buyers of this class of car tend to realise that their exercise is in compromise, albeit artfully designed ones. It's not short of charisma and it makes all the right noises, but is there an X factor to this car which is present in the very best RS products from Ingolstadt? An X factor which is there in its sister car, the RS6 Avant, that will be likely for you to decide as these things are intensely personal. Audi has clearly gone about this car in a very correct manner. Some may see this RS7's automatic gearbox as a less focused driver choice than the twin clutch S-Tronic transmission which is fitted to the S7, uh, but to drive it is to realize the genius in the eight-speed auto's logic and execution. All the constituent ingredients seem to have been assembled, but whether they hang together cohesively is a question that doesn't always disappear. So. Over to you.